Welcome to She Who Speaks. I am Renee, lover of a good laugh and all things behavioral. With me is Marilyn. She's unassuming with a good listening air and the unstoppable force with an angelic voice, which is Love Min. Together, we are She Who Speaks and we are so excited to be here with you because today we're doing viewer's choice. We ask you every week to let us know what you're thinking, what you want us to talk about. And today we're going to talk about what one of our very, very committed viewers has asked for. But before I tell you what it is, I have a question, girls. What is the craziest or strangest thing or fun that you've ever done because you are trying to... Um, be a people pleaser or avoid a conflict or um, <laughs> and I'll start mine's kind of silly so I have a thing where I like to see people enjoying themselves and because I get joy from seeing people enjoy themselves sometimes I'll allow myself to you know not enjoy myself so you can so the silly silly way that that shows up like a regular day in my house is I'm, I'm not a petite woman, but I'm smaller than my husband. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like he'll get into a groove and he likes to like relax and get pampered. And I'll literally feel like my lung is going to deflate. <laughs> but, but he looks so happy. Aww. So I can't bring myself to tell him, I can't breathe this move. You know? Aww. And then he'll be like, are, are you comfortable? And I'm like, actually, my leg is dead. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's a cute one. That's a cute one. Oh, right. right it's crazy. Right. What is cute? It's crazy right. it's cute and cute. I like it. Right. <laughs> that's so what cool. about you? What's the crazy, funny, silly thing that you do because you like to people please or, you know, whatever you call it? Girl, you're better than me because whew, I, can, <laughs> I have to breathe. <laughs> but what is strange is like sometimes with strangers, I will be like, I would be so polite and go such a long way just to please people that it's like completely. I've, I've bought some things that I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need it. Like I went that far. I've been in that situation. And uh, especially in the beginning when I first started to um, like go sh shopping on my own and do things on my own. And yeah. I didn't always have the the vocabulary to use the the right vernacular and stuff or sometimes i would not even understand completely what the person was telling me and i was like uh okay then okay <laughs> let's see. Um, so yeah i'm that type of person i'm definitely and even yeah even now sometimes i would i would just like someone in the street would like, you want that mask for five dollars I, I have 10 masks at home but i would be like sure. okay sure <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Yeah. I got some things in the back that I'm selling if you want. You know. right, 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 right. What about you, love men? Honestly, like, I'm sorry, there's nothing coming to my mind. I feel like I'm a combination of both of you guys. Like I, I understand you, not necessarily because not not necessarily because I was a foreigner in, in, in the US, but I, I like sometimes when you feel that they, they're giving the best, you know, and mm -hmm. you don't want it. So you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. But then you don't need it. It's whack. It's not even good. But you, <laughs> I've, done, I've been that person to me. Right. You're not alone, Marilyn. You're not alone. Mm -mm. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I, I bought something out of a parking lot in Ross just because somebody said, hey, good morning. Hey, did you get a sample bag? And then they showed it to me. And I thought, well, oh. I mean, they showed it to me. Now, how am I going to walk away and tell them no yeah, thank I'm, you? I'm, but yeah. now I learn, ladies, when, when I go to the mall, and you have those little kiosks yeah. 
tunnel vision. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> looking at you. Don't even say hello to me. I'm <laughs> not. not mm. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, man. <laughs> what about you? Jump in our comment section. Tell us what's the silliest, craziest, funniest thing you've done. Or probably still do. Just because, you know, you're such a sweet soul. <laughs> 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 you don't want to um, hurt someone else's feelings. Uh, as always, if you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button, the notification bell, so you're always in the know. And go ahead and smash like if you love our content. So what we are talking about today, or viewer's choice topic, is conflict resolution or conflict mm -hmm. avoidance. Mm -hmm. And this is a big, fun one. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like every time we're doing a, an episode, like we have a topic, it's related to something that I've been through during the week. Yeah, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my goodness. goodness. laughs> oh Lord, I guess the first question would to start it off is like, how do you approach like potential conflict? Like. Are you, do you feel like you're more of an avoider? Do you kind of go toe for toe? Do you take it on? How do you approach it? Personally, I'm. A, it depends on who you are. Mm. Yeah. Who are you in my life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you don't have the same privilege. Oh. So if you are like a really close relationship, like I don't mind conflict. I don't mind. I was raised in a household. Honestly, my mom, she's the type. She can scream and yell and share everything on her mind. And then like, okay, it's out. And mm -hmm. we yeah, move on. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is like that. And it's not always productive. Mm -hmm. And then in the, in the work environment, same thing. It depends on who you are. Like, it's not necessarily avoidance. It's more like, do I want to be engaged? Do I need to entertain? Mm -hmm. Is it really a conflict? Mm -hmm. Is it a conflict for us or for you only? <laughs> So I think that's parameter that I'm taking into consideration. So I'm not, you know, I don't think I'm an avoider, but the way I'm going to approach it is going to depend on our relationship. Yeah, that makes sense. Ladies, I am a huge avoider. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate any type of conflict. Even like, I would be a little more, even personal, I hate conflicts. Like, I would be like, and, and sometimes I like to, it's not that I don't like to discuss things. I like to discuss things, but anytime, any, any resistance or any um, like difference of opinions and stuff like this, and I start that it, I feel like it starts to get heated. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge, I like, I don't like conflicts. Yeah. I really don't like conflicts, so I avoid them at, at all costs. It's really um, something that I'm learning, actually. Like uh, that's. I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of the debate maybe, but um, debate, uh, I mean, conflicts are not always bad. No. It's not always bad. It can be productive, but for mm -hmm. me, it's hard to, um, to just be uh, facing someone and just not maybe um, like feeling, feeling that my opinion is valued or that, that hurt, hurting the person. That's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I don't like the feeling of hurting the some someone and someone it's not even sometimes it's not even counterproductive it is actually necessary but for me I always feel like I'm gonna hurt someone's feelings so I avoid the conflict so I feel like ugh. so I'm leaning more toward what Loveman says, but I'm also on what Marilyn says. So I'm not really in the middle. I'm, I'm more over to the, I am a head on person. I don't like elephants mm. and I don't like any, any elephant in my room because mm. there's not enough space. However, I've realized that like Loveman said, not everybody can take the direct, let's talk about it. And, and sometimes mm when because for me i'm the type of person it's always so strange for people to relate to me afterwards and then the fact that it's worked for you annoys me even more so then mm -hmm. it's like ugh. i'm the type of person like your mom love men i will come and say okay what's going on this is what i'm seeing this is what i'm doing all, all, all. let's talk about it and a lot of times it takes people off guard and they're not ready mm -hmm. to talk about it mm -hmm. so then they say things like oh no nothing's wrong which i then interpret as you're lying which then makes me think you're a liar so then my, my mind starts going in all these ways about, okay, mm, 
it's not, I don't like this space anymore because you're not, mm-hmm. you're not honest. But what I'm learning is, like you said, Loveman, there are some things, some hills that people say, some hills aren't, aren't worth going to die on. And so I just, there, there are some conflicts that I can see I'm being invited to. And like you, Marilyn, I will make a conscious effort not to show up. <laughs> I, can, I can see you dangling the bait. I can see you trying to reel me in. And I'm like, yeah, nope, not, not showing up. Not right. showing up. So okay. I, I'm a little bit of both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, one thing that I noticed that is like, when I'm not self-reflecting about myself, and I have to admit that one thing that is negative, though, is that sometimes I avoid conflicts, but I keep it in. And it's like in my head, it stares in the back of my mind. Mm-hmm. And then it builds resentment. So that's the, that's the danger. So I, that's why I said it's so important to, to sometimes um, go into the conflict and, and, and settle whatever is whatever's going on. So I, I feel like it's... it's it's important to um, <clears throat> maybe in between to know when to that when it's not going to be productive and know when okay it's actually necessary. So can and, I tell can I tell on myself for a little bit? Mm-hmm. What you said hit home for me because mm. it kind of ties into that fun little game we did. How you don't like to hurt people's feelings, and so sometimes you hold in a little bit more than you normally would have been comfortable holding. And I have a girlfriend who, just being honest this is the relationship that pushes me the most out of my comfort zone, like the most, because we have those hard conversations and we have them. Sometimes it feels like a lot. And one day I was talking to her and she said, why would you interpret this from what I had said? And I'm a thinker. So I go back home. I'm the type of person, if if something, if you and I have a disagreement, depending on how much it, it means I will go back and reflect on it. And if I can't figure it out by myself, I will pay a counselor to help me walk through it. That's, that's why I can't be friends with mm-hmm. So um, it's too much. It's expensive. Um, so I go back and I'm thinking, I'm like, why, why, did, why did it bother me that she said that? And then I realized it was because I was carrying past um, hurts from things that she had said and done. And as a result, though she did not intend to hurt me in this moment, I was bringing the heat from those unresolved issues. So that's a huge point that you made, Marilyn. I mean, a lot of times people walk away because there are moments when I felt like I was doing such a great job because I'm such a great, great peacemaker, but Mm -hmm. I'm not doing a great job because I, I haven't forgiven you. Right. And I'm upset with you about stuff that probably is not the forefront. But girl, when you mess up, I'm going to rip you so bad that you're going to be wondering, Renee, where did all this come from? It's because the peacemaker Renee didn't really make peace. She was just being nice and polite. That he, is hit so me, he hit me too what you just said because I believe that uh, there's a Bible verse in Luke 6 verse 45 mm-hmm. that said just the same, the part that I like that said, for the abundance of the heart is mouth speaks. Yeah. So technically, like you will speak mm-hmm. what you what really was happening in your heart. That's true. And sometimes I feel like in conflict, and that's something that I've been learning when conflict are initiated, it's like you can say you can learn a lot about how people perceive you mm-hmm. truly in the conflict. Example, let's say that you have a, a misunderstanding. And the person say, oh, you're manipulator. You're manipulating my word. Oh, you're such a liar. Like always attacking your character yes. and not the arguments. Just like, can, mm-hmm. can it, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Can we clarify? Like that's all, that's the purpose of this conversation. But mm-hmm. should you go straight to it? Like you're not giving me any type of benefit of the doubt? None. Mm-mm. Thank you. <laughs> well, let me know what you've been thinking about, Jenny. You know, and of course, the spirit will give you the discernment. Is it just someone that is it just, you know, in the heat of the argument, you're just saying that and it's not necessarily what you think? Oh, no. Or is it the uh, the Holy Spirit that's just giving you like a a little sneak peek of what's been going on, the perception that she's being or he's been cultivating about you and that we need to discuss. Depending on the friendship, you will lose. Do we need to really break it down and understand where does it come from? Did I do, have I done anything that hurts you? 
to the point that this is what you really think about me? Or is it your own insecurity? And I have no business with that. You need to check yourself and see you when you want to talk about it. Yeah. Like, that's when I feel the, sp- the Holy Spirit is guiding us in how to approach uh, conflict depending of the person. And, yep. the that you and, have. and one of the things that you said is so important. Do you ladies think that um, apologizing is necessary even when you're not technically wrong? <sighs> I believe that y- you apologize. Like I learned, the, mm-hmm. the, I mean, that was the story that was given to me when I was younger uh, to illustrate your, your, <laughs> your question. Like, let's say someone step on your, you step on someone's feet, but you were not aware, mm-hmm. you know? So, and the person will say, excuse me, you step on my feet, but you, you were like, really? It's, it's, it's fast, uh, flat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the person tell you that you did. I can apologize, I can apologize, uh, apologize for that. Uh, my body was unintentional. It was not intentional. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know? So what I'm trying to say, I will apologize where I'm up to where I can hold responsibility. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you, you want me to apologize about lying or stuff that you thought that I were true, I've been, I've, I explained to you it's not true or the way you, under, you heard it was not in that context. Therefore, it's not the same. It's not supposed to have the same impact. And you can receive that. I'm going to apologize for the impact. Mm. That you have on you. Mm-hmm. But if what I said was true and, and, and uh, factual, I that's, said that's, what that's, I that's, said. That's, that's the one that you <laughs> so I'm sorry for the impact. I'm sorry right. for the form. I'm sorry, maybe because I should have brought maybe next time I will take that into consideration. Now I know that you're sensitive to this type of work. Okay. Mm-hmm. But if what I'm saying is true, meaning Ooh, it's A and plus B. <laughs> You want me to? I'm not now. And something that I don't like, though. I'm sorry. I'm Go, sure. girl. Because speak for both of us. Because I mean, I don't. I'm not even. Going, who is so full effect right now? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what I will do. I'm something that I try to not do, and I don't like is when say, if I if I hurt you, I'm sorry. If maybe mm-hmm. I say this, and no, you did. Mm-hmm. Apologize. Mm-hmm. And let's move on. But like, if I feel like you're not really owning it, like, so I hope you guys understand. Like, I understand that sometimes it's unintentional. So yeah, I yeah. Would apologize to the impact that I, that it caused and all of that. I have no problem with that. But if when you apologize, it's fake apologies. Like, if maybe those words as meaning, and the meaning is mean that you don't own it. <laughs> you exactly. So keep it. I'd rather you to say quiet than maybe if I did this. Bye. Like we grown now. now. When we in our twenties, maybe it worked. Not now. <laughs> oh, so at first, I'm like, love men is speaking for me, so I don't even need to answer. But so the only thing, mm, this is a struggle of mine. This is a real life struggle of mine. I mean, why did she put this question? This this fierce choice question is like, hey, all up in my in my business. <laughs> I mean, you viewers don't play. Okay, so let's go there. So this is a struggle of mine and here's why. I'm a very, I, I'm a very, like I think things through. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that I don't have blindside, um, blindsided moments, I do. But like if we're having a conversation and a discussion or a conflict, I'm likely not going to say anything I don't mean. I understand that there are people in the world who to say things because they're upset and they want to hurt you just as bad as you, because my personality is not that way. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for me um, in those moments where, like Loveman mentioned, if I think, if I don't think that I've done something wrong, and even in your explanation, mm-hmm. it sounds like it's your issue really, and it's really nothing I did. It's, I, it's hard. Like, it's hard for me to say sorry, because for me, and one of the things that um, in experiences similar to that, why it's been hard is because... I find that in those relationships, the people that don't own anything, don't see how they affected anything, you telling them sorry doesn't help them. It, it, comes oh, off, it comes off as if now you're empowering them that, see, I knew all along that I was right and you're a bad person. 
And so in those moments, it's almost like, do I enable you by, by giving you this, I'm so sorry. So now you can pat yourself on your back and you're not doing the work to go deeper. Those are really, really, that's, that's really hard for me. And in those moments, like Jesus, what do I do? He guide you. He will because you. I'm, but again, I agree. So that's one perspective, but I do agree that there are moments where, let me, can I, let me just give it a real example. Yes. So we, mm, God, she's going to see this. I love you, girl. <laughs> I love you. So there was a friend of mine and we grew up together and I, I think too much. So um, she had an experience. Oh, Jesus. I don't want to give the example, but I've already started. She <laughs> had an experience where... <laughs> It's a safe place. Don't worry. I know, right? <laughs> all, uh, with all the 20 people or however many people. <laughs> um, so she had an experience and I didn't, I knew that she was judging herself for the experience that she had. So in an effort to try to still show support and be there for her without coming off as the judgment she would have already felt, I used the word, I wait to ask that was even more offensive than if I just straight up said, hey, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to Jesus because I don't want to offend nobody. And it was offensive to her when in reality, I was trying not to offend her and had mm -hmm. offended her by trying not to offend her. Mm -hmm. I owned it. I told her I was sorry because in that moment I can, I could see clearly how what I had said had caused the feelings that then came over her. I can own those. But if you're telling me something like um, I wore red and you're a, you don't like red and you've told me before that you, you don't like red and I keep wearing it and you feel like I'm trying to. OK, now, sister, you have to own that. And I can't tell you sorry because I'm wearing red because clearly something's. So, yeah, anyway, go on. I digress. Let's move on. <laughs> no, 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 ladies, me. <laughs> sorry. No, 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 go ahead. You sure? No. Uh, because so, I was going to go to the next one, but go ahead. I want to <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I was just about, I'm be very short because, um, <laughs> so I'm a people pleaser, so I apologize very easily, very easily. But do you mean it? No, not always. <laughs> <That's the thing. laughs> I'm honest, I'm honest. I don't always mean it, but I, I don't want to have a conflict. So I, I'll always be the bigger person if it makes you feel like, that if he can settle the issue before we get to the point. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my bad. But how do you feel? But how, uh, how do you like feel? I, said, I'm, I am learning to, I am currently on the journey. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Learn to, uh, to say sometimes, as you said, sorry for the way it made you feel. Mm -hmm. uh, but right but it's not i'm not always sorry for what i said but um the other thing is that on a more personal level like with my very best friend and people that i'm very close to i am harder on them like i don't apologize as easily and i'm very i try as much as possible to be super honest with my with the people um so sometimes it's sometimes it would seem like the opposite, but I'm harder on people on the people that I that I really like love. And the more I love you, the more honest I will be with you. The more exactly. like sometimes I would say, reality check. I can be very honest, mm -hmm. very honest. Mm -hmm. But I like I said, I'm a conflict avoider. So unfortunately, I have a tendency to apologize too too easily. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that there's some personality? that uh that will never allow you to resolve to resolve conflict <laughs> yes and this is what i'm talking about <laughs> when i said that sometimes i'd rather say sorry and then go, uh -huh. go about your business i'll go uh -huh. about mine because there are some people that unfortunately no matter if you apologize or if you don't apologize or you should try to settle no matter how nice you are it's like, it's, it's just unavoidable. Like you can't. So I feel like for these people, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I would have a tendency to avoid those people. Yeah. Unfortunately, because you can be real. If you're real, it's a problem. You can apologize. It's a problem because now they'll walk over you and like do whatever they manipulate you and do whatever they want with you. 
So you cannot win. So I'll be, I would try my best to still, I mean, I'm not in order not to entertain like bad feelings towards them. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, like try to avoid this situation and let this Mm -hmm. person work on themselves or see for themselves. Or maybe, maybe someone can get to them, but that's not me. So that's, that's my take on it. I would say yes, like Loveman said, yes, yes. I, I think so that there's some personalities. Um, but like Marilyn said, so I had a really tough experience um, more recently where I started questioning who I am at, at the core, like as a person. And I started thinking, well, maybe I'm a little too intense. Maybe, you know, maybe I need to dial it back. Maybe, I, but then you know what I chose to do after counseling? Cause I, you know, I go there all the time is I started to just form relationships with people who appreciated all of me. So rather than trying to um, change me because you and I don't click too well, you know, or your style of being isn't really gelling with my style of being. So now I'm trying to change me to fit you. How about I take myself out of the square that our friendship is in love you to the fullest of my being, but allow myself to go out into greener pastures and just enjoy being who I am and who God wants me to be in a positive way. So I do think that there are personalities that just don't want it. Don't. Yeah. They don't, they don't get, they, they aren't the best combination. And rather than, than uh, painting a person as a bad person because mm-hmm. your personalities don't match right. too well, just, like just go find some, go, go somewhere else where you're, you're okay to be celebrated, to be who you are. And it's not too much, you know? I have, I'm sorry, love me. No. But haven't you guys noticed that sometimes some people are a certain way with you, but they are not the same way with other people? Oh yeah, all the time. So, so that's why I like what you just said, Renee, <laughs> that it doesn't mean that they are bad to the mm-hmm. core. It's just that with you and maybe your traits and my traits of personalities, it's not, it's not possible for us to flourish and to grow and to, to be, to, yeah, to be who we, we at, are. At least, and, and not that you can still have a relationship with them, yes. but maybe you can't have as close of a relationship right. as you used right. to. Right. Um, because you... So one thing I'm very clear on about myself is that my personality mm-hmm. changes whatever room I'm in. I'm not trying to say I'm the, you know, I'm so, but I realize that because I usually I'm so on either end of the spectrum. I'm either bouncing off the wall, giddy, or mm-hmm. I'm like so quiet that it's awkward and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So I, I recognize that. And so I'm realizing that there's some spaces that it's best for me not to go too frequently, no matter if we had a great time we maybe can only get together once a month or once a quarter because yeah. anything other than that, then you start to change me or I start to change you. And mm-hmm. then we start entering this uncomfortable, not healthy mix. So Ooh, guys, uh, <laughs> I'm hot. I've been telling this cover- this conversation as a uh, bless- as blessing for me as we talk. And mm-hmm. I hope you guys is a blessing. It's a blessing for you too. Yeah. I'm thinking for me uh, as we, regarding personalities, it depends uh, again who are you in our relationship. Mm-hmm. Because I think something that I learned like two days ago, <laughs> all <laughs> I'm learning is I'm realizing that unfortunately, uh, uh, I was trying to be uh, to I, I'm 100. When in friendship, I will give you 100. But I'm really realizing not everybody can take it, appreciate it. Mm-mm. And it's no, and it's no, I'm not arrogant when I'm going to say that. Not everybody is worth my 100%. That's true. Because, and and, and sometimes you, you, you keep pouring in people in people, but in the reality, it doesn't matter how much you pour, their, verse, their vase is broken. It's, 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 and, so you, it's just, it's just a draining relationship. And you're like, I want your best and best your best. And then, so what I'm trying to do, uh, what I'm trying to explain is sometimes it's, it's, uh, uh, we just have to adjust, like not, like not every fresh team is the same. Like mm-hmm. it's not the same level for everybody. And therefore and that's okay. And, and I think I had a hard time. Some, my, sometimes my assumption is like, oh, we grew up at uh, church. So we're supposed to be the same. Oh heck no! Oh. We know <laughs> we are we are different, 
And uh, while I'm here with the, you know, no, I'm not thinking because we're Christian. I believe that uh, we're not, uh, we don't expect evil. You know, you will give me the benefit of the doubt. We will have conversation. We can pray about it. N not everybody <laughs> can. <laughs> not everybody can do that. So then here you are by yourself, suffering <laughs> about the relationship. But the person is like, oh, who she's thinking? Living my best life. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm learning, like I have to adjust accordingly. And it's mm -hmm. not in fact, it's just like, it's just, just, it's a different context for everybody. I, I'm still myself, but you won't have that. Not everybody can have the full experience like that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is I'm learning that not everybody can, uh, you cannot engage as much for, if each relationship is different. That's why I'm, I'm learning and it's okay. You're not being fake. It's not you being mm -hmm. authentic. Mm -hmm. It's just it won't work. Mm -hmm. It won't work, and you will have just you will be the one hurting at the end mm -hmm. by giving, giving, giving because they will take, 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 take. But <laughs> you, yeah. And it's unfair to them too, and it's unfair to you. You know what I mean? I have so I'm a hugger, and I'm like personal space is for people that don't like each other, in my opinion. <laughs> that's not real. That's just a Reneeism, right? Hey, but that's yeah, how yeah. I am. And but I had I had very close friendship with a, a, a girlfriend of mine that I seldom ever touched her because she doesn't like to be touched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I wanted to be hugged, mm -hmm. I waited until I saw my other girlfriend and we would hug each other and grown women sit on each other laps and whatever. But I didn't make her a bad person because she don't want me to touch her. Right. It's just her thing. And so I think, like, you know, you just have to respect people, love them where they are and understand that no one friend can be your everything because it's not a fair expectation. Yeah. You say this? You say this? Yeah. So guys, have you been, uh, have you ever found yourself in the middle of a conflict, like between two friends? Are you the type of being a mediator or are you just, uh, are you the type of being like, that's on you guys? <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't do, so first of all, I mean, so sorry, like this, can you tell I like this topic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't do group friendships because I don't like them. I feel, I find that I'm so, I'm just telling you, I'm being honest. I don't like group friendships because I feel like there's always going to be a, a leaning toward one person and then there's going to be side conversations and then there are going to be sides that are taken. I just, I've never seen girl group friendships that go well. Comment in the, in the comment section if you have them and they're thriving. Tell me your secret. I don't do them. I'm a one-on-one -on -one person. So because of that, I've never had that. Um, in moments where I've ever had like maybe two friends and they were friends and something is happening. Like I said, I don't like elephants other than to see them at the zoo. So I've always just said, hey, come talk about it. Because I'm again, I don't. Yeah, so no. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marilyn? <sighs> um, <laughs> uh, it never really happened to me. I can't really think about a, a time when it happened to me. Maybe that, like the last time it happened was like in high school or something like that. <laughs> so I'm always a peace and love person. Like I'm always, oh no, when people <laughs> are like, oh no, why you think, why do you think this about that person and stuff like this? So I'm always the person who tries to mediate as, as much as I can. <laughs> but, um, and I've learned really to just separate myself from any type, any type of disagreement because sometimes also, you would tell someone uh, something to someone and say, you know, like you hear the, you're hearing the person vent and it, you're just, you're not always telling them, hey, you're right about that, but you're like, hmm, you're listening to them and you're like, hmm, hmm, and I understand. So I, I like to say, I understand what you're yeah. saying. I understand, mm -hmm. but I don't like to take sides because once you do that, then some words can get around and say, hmm, even Marilyn said that you ah, are yes, yes, this yes, and yes, that yes. and that. Um, so I'm very careful when I'm, I'm counseling or giving advice to someone um, about a situation um, like uh, concerning another person. I always try to say, I understand how you feel. I understand how mm -hmm, you yes, feel. That's stuff, right. But I really try not to um Make like sense. right exactly take sides or or use adjectives that can mm -mm, mm -hmm. go out of hand so that that's my take on it that's... yeah 
Uh, so I, I've been in group friendship and sometimes I did have conflict myself or, yeah. uh, or my friend had conflict. And often I've been like that person that just, I don't know if it's been a mediator, but it's like, I'm hearing your perspective. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing the other perspective. And if you, and they usually call me mm-hmm. because they know that I will be like, have you considered that? Mm-hmm. Have you considered so I'm like you said, I'm not taking side. I'm just saying then if I if I don't agree ab- about the behavior, mm-hmm. like I will I will I will let people know. Like if you want for me, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Like I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Mm-hmm. But in some type of comic, most of the time I'm more like, but maybe that was her perspective. What hurts is when you that you are the one with that work, <laughs> but people don't do the same when you are the one in conflict with you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like can somebody talk for me? Yeah. <laughs> Save me, somebody. Have you, have you ever considered maybe she would think this, maybe she didn't make it this way? Just for you to have a different perspective. And I do have friends who do that. Do that. And I would say, no, maybe she's saying that, but maybe that was in the context. Mm-hmm. Just to let people know that with this, maybe another narrative, and it's not mm-hmm. as uh, uh, mean as, as you think. It may be sometimes, sometimes it's just hard feeling and, the way it come out, it was not the best, but you know her heart, you know she didn't mean wrong. So maybe like that, like that's the type of work that I try to do with when, with my friend. And that's something that I hope my friend will do for me, so. Right, right. Whew. And ladies, one more question. That's a funny one. <laughs> and then we'll, I think that will be it. <laughs> you think that there would ever be a line crossed that would cause you to be, to go physical on someone? Uh, <laughs> I can answer first because my answer is short. I think thoughts that need deliverance, but I'm too conscious about my face to fight anybody. <laughs> so it's a no for me. I don't want you to turn around and slap me hard in my face or scrape my face. So no, I'm not fighting you. Mm-mm. Me, no. I don't think so either. But the, the, the place that can take me to a position that I, I'm not aware is like my daughter. Like I'm a, I don't know. Right, like right. Just, something really bad to my daughter that maybe but other than that other than your thing like you in, insult me blah, i don't care like i barely know right. you. Okay. <laughs> for, me, for me it's like words are words so i'm not fighting <laughs> anyone i'm not so a funny thing to me is that when i first came to the u.s and i used to watch bad confession my lady i used to watch like bad kidball wives and stuff like this and uh-huh. i was like I was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> how do people do that? Why would you yes, do I that? agree. Like, I was mesmerized by, <laughs> yes, by those, grown, those grown women fighting with each other. Um, so I, I stopped watching it because it was yes. just too much after a while. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not a fighter. Like I said, yeah. I, peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. <laughs> what about you guys? Tell us, jump in the comment section. Is there something that could push you to throw hands? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> Let us know. And golly, can you believe we're already out of time? But we've had so much fun talking about this. This this viewer choice. Keep them coming. This one was really yes, good. Was this fun. was really good. I mean, I could go forever, but I'm just going to hush up. But... <laughs> Tell us what you think. What are some tips that you would give for people who are conflict avoidant? Understanding that not all conflict is bad and that conflicts are really just a great opportunity to learn more about yourself and about others and how you can care for and love each other more. As always, we are delighted to be of service to you. Thank you for checking out our content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye.